So recently I had to delete one of my YouTube videos and it was the video where I showed you how to get the automotive PicoScope software to work with your PicoScope 2204A or any other non-automotive oscilloscope. So in a recent software update from PicoScope, they have made it so that that hack that I showed you in that video, deleting the OEM DLL file does no longer work. Now don't worry because in my opinion this is still the best place to start your oscilloscope journey. What you will also notice is that in all of my YouTube videos I'm using the normal PicoScope 6 software. The other thing you've got to remember is that PicoScope 6 is actually being retired and they're no longer going to support it later on this year. Um, they're actually migrating the whole automotive waveform library onto PicoScope 7. So if you're a PicoScope automotive user, you better start getting used to PicoScope 7. The great news is that PicoScope 7 is also available for this now, so give, download it and give it a go. However, that little hack that I showed you before doesn't work for PicoScope 7. And what we need to remember is actually the two softwares are near identical. So at the minute we've got PicoScope 6 waveform up on the display. Now be careful not to blink because I'm going to switch over to PicoScope Automotive and see what differences you can see. Okay, there we go, we switched over. Did, did you see much? There we are, switched back, back to automotive, back to normal, back to automotive. Now, as you can see, that most of the functionality for the normal PicoScope 6 is exactly the same as PicoScope Automotive. The main things that you got with the automotive software is that you had some probes, so some pre preset automotive probes. Now, if you're looking to only shell out $100 for one of these, I doubt that you're going to be going in and buying the PicoScope probes to go with that. So that's not too much of a worry, and it's actually quite straightforward to make your own probe setups on the software anyway. The other thing that you got was this tab here, which had a load of preset for all the different components that you might come across on a car. Now, this is pretty handy. You can go on there, choose what uh, component you want to measure, and then give it a click. It will set the oscilloscope up for you, and it will even open up a web page giving you some information on how that test works. So it's actually really useful. Now, you can still use this for free on the automotive demo mode. Um, all you would have to do is make a note of these settings and copy them across. What you could also do is save these files so that you can open them up whenever you want and in the, in the normal software and actually just go ahead and use them. But personally for me, when I first started using PicoScope Automotive, I was never using these automotive features. What really helps you learn how to use the oscilloscope itself is actually um, playing with the settings, adjusting it yourself and understanding how it works. Again, although the 2204A isn't marketed as an automotive oscilloscope, how many of you have got an automotive multimeter? I've actually got one. Here's my automotive multimeter. Here is my normal fluke meter. What are the main differences? This one does a few extra things, like it does RPM measurements, it will do millivolt readings, microamp readings, and some other things that I don't really use very often. However, they both do the basic voltage, resistant, and current draw for 10 amps, which is what I use most of the time when I'm testing. And for most part, the same goes with this oscilloscope. This oscilloscope will measure most of the things that we do on a daily basis. Let's have a quick look. So here's PicoScope 7. This is the normal version that you will get for the 2204A. Here is the automotive version. Again, as you will see, they are very, very similar. We've got the same options here for the channels and the time and the trigger. The main features that you're going to be using for your oscilloscope testing. Now let's just take a few measurements with this here. So first up there, we've got the uh, crankshaft sensor. As you can see, it's, it's done a pretty good job of picking that up. Also, we've got a camshaft sensor there, so we can just um, adjust the time a bit so we can see more of that on the display there. If you fit an attenuator to your oscilloscope, you can then measure um, injectors, and you can see there, look, we've got an injector on the screen. We can ju just adjust those settings to increase the size of the waveform, and it's doing a pretty good job of that so far. And we can even increase the time base and measure things like throttle position sensors, so like an analog change in voltage over a longer period of time. 
and as you can see it's it's doing just fine. So if the access to the automotive software is the decision maker for your purchase of one of these cheaper PicoScope oscilloscopes, don't let it put you off. In fact, what you'll probably find is you'll buy this oscilloscope, learn how to use it, find the limits, and then you'll really appreciate the purchase of the more expensive automotive oscilloscope, which is exactly what I did.